Good evening to you on this Monday night. I'm Jackson Gosnell. Why it is away tonight? Well, Donald Trump and his race for the Oval Office continues to be looked at as more indictments happen. It seems like every other day. Now a third indictment and possibly even a fourth one is coming. So we want to get the legal perspective on all of this. Joining us now is former Deputy Attorney General Tom Dupree. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure, Jackson. Thanks for having me. What do you make of this latest indictment, and do you think that it's political weaponization as the former president alleges it is? Well, look, my view is not that the Department of Justice is corrupt or, or anything like that. Uh, that said, it's understandable why certainly a substantial percentage of Americans view these cases, these indictments, through a political lens. Uh, president Trump despite all of these indictments, remains very strong in the polls. He's the leading Republican contender for president of the United States, and he is being prosecuted in two of these cases by uh, administration, members of uh, Joe Biden's administration, his opponent. So it's understandable why people view these as political, but ultimately the acid test of whether or not these are legitimate or political will be before the jury, uh, the evidence and the facts that these prosecutors submit to support their charges. What do you think about future indictments? Do you think we'll see any more in the coming weeks? I do. I think it's a virtual certainty that we will see an indictment in the state of Georgia. Um, these, this indictment would likely focus on former President Trump's efforts to uh, you know, change the vote, question the vote, challenge the vote in the state of Georgia back in 2020. Um, and certainly everything we've seen from statements from the prosecutors in Georgia to the fact that they're putting security barricades up outside the courthouse in Georgia is all indications point to an indictment within the next week or so. Do you think, again, that that might be political weaponization? The, the former president calls this a perfect phone call that he made. A lot of people disagree with that. But what's your analysis as it relates to those looming charges that may or may not come? Well, I guess it, it doesn't surprise me on either front. In other words, it doesn't surprise me one bit that former President Trump is arguing that this is politicized, um, that the prosecutor has made no secret um, that she is kind of determined to bring an indictment. Uh, she's certainly not a fan of former President Trump. And it doesn't surprise me at all that he's been very active on social media and his speeches, um, arguing that this is just politicized prosecution. Um, on the other hand, uh, you know, the uh, grand jury in Georgia has looked at the evidence. The DA was required to put evidence before the grand jury. And if she moves ahead with an indictment, it will be because the grand jury, uh, citizens of Georgia who've looked at the evidence and the testimony that she's put before it, thinks that there's enough there to go forward. Do you think that this that all these indictments will help the former president in his current run for the White House. You mentioned that the polls go up after these. Do you predict that will continue to be the case over the course of the next few that may come? Look, I think it is going to continue to benefit former President Trump so far as the Republican primary goes. Um, it, it does not seem as though he loses much, if any, support in the Republican Party through all of these indictments, arguably he's increased his support fairly substantially. Uh, I mean, he's just pulling away with this race right now. Uh, whether or not that trend holds in the context of a general election is a much more complicated question and much more difficult. Uh, just because Republicans aren't bothered by the indictments doesn't mean that Democratic voters and independent voters, uh, the people whose votes will have more of an impact in a general election, would have the same reaction as the Republicans. So my take is short term, yes, big political benefit for President Trump. Long term, well, the jury is literally out on that question. I want to talk to you about this because Trump's legal team does not like what the federal prosecution's request is, which is that they limit what he can say about the indictment case tied to his attempt to try and overturn that election. Do you think that it's likely the prosecution could limit that? Where do you see that going? Yes. And look, that's a fairly standard request in these types of cases from prosecutors that they will ask the trial judge to impose a protective order on the defendant that limits what the defendant can say, the information the defendant can share publicly and that sort of thing. It's very typical. It 
also doesn't surprise me one bit that former President Trump is pushing back hard. He's arguing that this sort of order will limit his First Amendment rights. Um, and clearly he does have First Amendment rights at stake here to comment on the trial, to comment on actions that are of public importance like this indictment. I think where this goes is I think the district judge is going to impose a protective order, but I think she will try to tailor it. In other words, to balance these competing considerations. On one hand, I think she will limit it to evidence that truly, genuinely should be kept secret, either because it would jeopardize witnesses or it would disclose classified information or whatever the reasons you would have for keeping it secret go. At the same time, I think she will allow room for former President Trump to comment on this trial, as is his constitutional right, again, within the confines of not violating the protective order. So it's a bit of a balancing act. And that's how I think the judge is going to try to strike that balance. Trump's legal team has said that they want to shield only genuinely sensitive materials from public view. What could they be talking about there? Well, let's see. There are a number of things that could be at issue. Um, I guess the first thing that would spring to mind is if there's any information that's classified uh, that's at issue. In other words, information that could potentially threaten, jeopardize, undermine United States security, national defense issues, things of that nature. That would be part of it. Um, you also would want to make sure that there's no information that could be used in a way that might chill witness testimony that might be used to disclose personal information about witnesses that could otherwise uh, deter them from offering truthful testimony at trial. Um, and then there could be other things that the government wants to keep secret for its own reasons. But regardless of what the government asserts as a reason for keeping this information safe, they need to justify it. The district judge can't just accept the government's claims blindly, she's got to kick the tires a little bit on what the government is saying needs to be kept secret and make sure that there's really a genuine, reasonable basis for keeping it secret and limiting speech in that respect.